My name is Josh Meeker. I'm 39 years old. I'm born and raised in St. Mary's, now I reside in Salina. Um, I guess it all started pretty much when I was one. Um, my parents uh, split up and my mom didn't want me and I didn't realize it at the time. But my dad took me and had an off and on relationship with my mom until I was about 13 probably. And then I got more of a better relationship. About the age of 12, 13, I started drinking alcohol, smoking marijuana. Uh, probably last, that lasted probably until I was 16. And then I turned to the harder drugs, started doing cocaine, LSD, uh, anything I get my hands on pretty much. Well, that all took a back seat when I was 17 and I injected heroin for the first time. It was, I thought I found my purpose in life. It was the best feeling I had ever had. Um, I couldn't, I just, I couldn't get enough of it. And this was at 17, I was still in high school and no sooner than I graduated high school, I committed my, a felony. I broke into a drug dealer's house where I could have my drugs and you know, I ended up getting caught and I went and did three years in prison for that. As soon as pretty much I got released off probation, it was, I put myself in front of my family and I started partying again. I started off doing cocaine all the time. And then shortly thereafter, it was right back into the heroin. Uh, my wife at the time, Amanda, she got custody of, of the girls. Uh, I went back to prison for possession of heroin. So it was just every time I would get out, I'd just run back to the drugs. And it was just a nonstop vicious cycle. And it made me a person that, who I really wasn't. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself a pretty nice person for the most part. And I was robbing people, I was stealing, lying. I, I, I mean, I don't care who you were. It was anything I could do to feed my addiction, I did. Well, when I met Josh, I was, I was addicted to heroin. Um, I was trying at that point to be clean. So he was clean, so I thought it was a good idea, you know. So we, we were hanging out for a little bit and he, was, he had tips on how I could feel better when I was getting clean because it's horrible pain and suffering. Um, and then, you know, I did get clean and I was clean for a couple weeks. And then you get this thought in your head, well, might as well just do a little bit, you know, because I can handle it now. You know, well, a little bit turned into a lot, and then his dad died, and it was just completely out of control. Um, come to find out, he had left an insurance policy in my name for $25,000, and that was going in 30 days or 60 days. It was just blew through in drugs. We were smoking crack, and we were doing heroin, and just anything that we could possibly get our hands on and a lot of it, massive amounts. Just stuff, you know, people will say, oh, that's enough that would kill a horse. Yeah, that's, that's what we were doing. And um, we went on like that for a long time. And then my, my stepmother, she started praying for us. As I sat on those pews, the Word of God began to soak into my life, and my heart, and my spirit. You know, my body was drugged up, but my spirit was there, and it was alive, and, and it was soaking up every Word of God. And She was going to church, and she came home one, one day, and she's like, you know, it's over, I'm getting clean. My, my family asked me to the altar, and I went and I gave my life to the Lord and he cleansed me that very moment like he took it all out like I was sick but it wasn't as bad as it had been before after about eight or nine months I relapsed and I was, was running hiding from her and you know just sneaking behind her back saying I'm going to work, getting drugs, going to work, and then leave work early to get drugs. It was just, you know, everything revolved around the drugs again. 
And she come home one night and she said, oh, I'm done, I'm not living like this no more. And she packed up and left. You know, I was praying to the Lord because, you know, I knew. It was like the Holy Spirit in me knew that he was lying and that I had to move and do something about this. Or you don't ever know what could have happened. He could have died, you know, and if I was disobedient to the Spirit when God told me, you know, if you want me to fix him, if you want me to save this, then you need to get out of my way and let me be God. For 30 more days, I kept at it. You know, it was like, all right, cool, I'm single now. You know, I can do what I really want to do now. And it just got to a point where it was, I don't know, I just had enough. About a month later, I got a call from Josh, and he said he was ready to go to the refuge after we showed him the flyers. And it took him a while to come around. But it was answered prayer because it was constant. I was going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, Tuesday, and I was, it was never ceased. I just kept pushing forward and just claiming my life back because I'd had enough of the devil stealing from me, stealing my joy, my time, my energy, just my peace and everything. And my, my, my boyfriend, you know, and I, I just remained faithful and trusted the Lord, even though everything looked completely a mess. Usually my withdrawals were, were horrible, like horrible. And I was not looking forward to going through that. And like there was 20 guys at this house and you know, they, they got around me, prayed over me and stuff like that. And this was on a Monday and Thursday, usually I was down for a week to 10 days if I was sick withdrawing. And Thursday, I was out playing football with the guys. And, you know, I, I wasn't 100%, but I wasn't like I was. And they were like, all right, maybe, maybe there's something to this God thing. So, you know, I got real close with an individual, and I'm still close with him today. And it was, I just opened up to him, you know, he, he talked to me about God and who he was, and, you know, and everything just, you know, just showed me who he was. And, I just gave it to, you know, it was November 2nd, 2015, and I just, I gave it to God. I said, you know what, I'm done. I can't, when I got control of this boat, I like, you know, it's, I crash it. I take control, you know, I'll do whatever you want me to do. We lived apart when he came home. I, I wouldn't allow us to live together, you know, I'm like, nope we're staying apart until we're married and husband and wife we're not living together even though we lived in sin for that whole time we you know it says to repent and turn from your wicked ways so that's what we were doing <laughs> whether he was on board or not he had to better get on board <laughs> so um we got married on march 20th and it's been three years it's been awesome our wedding theme is ephesians 3 20 and that is God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask, think, or imagine according to his power at work within us. So that's our promise, that's our wedding promise, and that's what we stand on. Well, while I was at the refuge, I was going out and helping homeless ministries. Uh, feed the homeless in Columbus. And it was just, I loved doing it, I couldn't get enough of it. And so, like God just put it on my heart one day, he's like, you're gonna do this in your area. And he gave me the name for a ministry called Make Me Whole Ministries. So that's kind of where we're at today. Uh, God has just totally, totally changed my life. Um, I got custody of my daughter, I got a good job, I got a, I could pay my bills, you know, just, he's restored everything. I mean, more than I ever expected. If anybody's struggling, you know, and listening to that, listening to that voice inside that says you, you're, nobody cares or there's no way out, Jesus cares and, and he is the only way out. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So, give it a shot watch what he can do. <laughs>